My name is Kathy Defoe, and I'm the chair of the trustees here at the Athenaeum. And I want to welcome everyone, both those in, all those in person, as well as our Zoom participants, to the uh, joint planning back at land conservation and outdoor recreation. The Athenaeum has partnered with our neighbors at the Beckett Art Center to put on this presentation. Welcome your feedback on this program and suggestions for future events. You'll receive an email with a link to a short survey, please fill this out to help us with future programming. And with that, I'm going to introduce the director of the Beckett Art Center, John Beatty, to continue on with the program. Thank you, Kathy. So I am Jen Beatty. I'm the executive director of the Beckett Art Center right across the parking lot here. Um, we're excited to present this joint event with the library tonight. Um, the main thing um, I wanted to tell you about this is this is sort of the opening of our exploration series. And um, as we were sort of planning during the winter time, what, what were we going to do? What kind of topics did we want to cover this year? Um, this was one that really spoke to us. And uh, so we're very excited to be opening the event tonight as part of our exploration series. Um, our next event is on the first Monday of next month, we're taking um, a little break after this event because we don't want to interfere with Easter. Um, so please check our website. Um, our next event is going to be Monday, May 2nd, and it's going to be the uh, League of Women Voters talking about the importance of local turnout in elections. So please stay tuned for that. And um, I'm going to introduce our next person who is going to be Michael Avery. Thank you. I'm Michael Avery, one of the select board members here in the town of Beckett. And I was on the open spaces committee serving with these excellent folk. Uh, the hill towns embody many extraordinary resources from an abundance of natural beauty to significant historic and cultural amenities. For many of us, these unique and remarkable attributes are the reason we live in our rural communities. Protecting these quality of life features equates to protecting what we value in our towns. Come on in, there's seats up front. In 2008, Beckett residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act as a direct and lasting tool to aid in the protection and preservation of our town's character. By establishing this local community preservation fund, Beckett recognized the value of having an alternative to fund pressing historical open space and affordable housing needs. Property taxes traditionally fund the day to day operating needs of safety, health, schools, roads, maintenance, and more, and more. But until CPA was enacted, there was no steady funding source for preserving and improving our community's character and way of life. So to name a few of, think of projects that have been passed and, and we've worked on here right across the street, the Mullen House Restoration, this building here, the Beckett Athenaeum Exterior Restoration and Painting, North Beckett Park Rehabilitation down the road there, and the Center Lake Weed Project. And just last year in 2021 alone, three projects were approved, insulating the fine Beckett's Art Center next door, which uh, has taken place or mostly, yes. Restoration and preservation of the first congregational church of Beckett. I know their bell tower was suffering some beetle rot and it's a historic building. They were working on that quite a lot. And this grant money and some citizen donations got that project done. And something near and dear to my heart, something I've worked on to get done. Uh, and a lot of folks in the audience, Tommy and Al, Notably, Esau's Heel Trail, the new trail over on Route 20 is open. Uh, we're going to have a, a more official opening with a kiosk and unveiling and a ceremony to be announced with all the chaos with the town administrator and other folks leaving. It's a bit of chaos in, the, in town hall, but we'll, we'll get a date out there on the calendar when it gets warmer. So that was funded largely by the CPA as well. Tonight, planners from the Berkshire Regional Planning Commission and the Open Space and Recreation Advisory Committee volunteers will present and discuss what Beckett looks like and ask what you want it to look like and you online. 
there is survey available we'd like you to take so we can better understand the community's thoughts and feelings regarding open space and recreation in the town of Beckett. Let me mask up and I'll introduce our next speaker. Kara Farrell is on the Berkshire Regional Planning and she has guided us through this whole process. So I'll bring her up and give her a warm round of applause. Thank you. One, I'm new to the Berkshires. I just moved here in December. So um, I've got uh, my first open space and recreation plan on my hands. Uh, Lauren, Welcome to thank you. <laughs> Lauren Garrity is here somewhere. She's been helping me uh, with everything and she's uh, going to be manning some of the tables afterwards and she's very knowledgeable as well. So hi to everyone online. Is that a good angle? Should I be tall? Not for good. Because <laughs> I can't grow. <laughs> I think I'm done there. All right. So I'm going to click. So welcome. We have open space and recreation plans. Um, the main purpose is to allow a municipality to maintain and enhance all the benefits of open space that together make up a much, much of the character of our communities and protect the green infrastructure of the community. So we have our purpose, a bonus, and tonight. So the purpose is to update our plan from 2006, which is a little dated, mm. if you will. <laughs> we have a nice large map up here, which once we get up and shuffle around and we do the hands-on activities, uh, you'll be able to see the what it looked like then. And we've got a, an updated version of the open space map over here that we printed as well. So. Like Mike mentioned, the plan increases Beckett's eligibility for state grants. That's similar to the CPA funds. The CPA funds for Beckett are at 1.5%. The maximum is 3%. So there's that's an option for the town of Beckett to increase that. But that's just, um, just a thought that, that I think of when we think of state grants. And so for tonight, the purpose is to learn about what you think it should look like and what it should feel like in the coming years. I don't live here, you do. So that's why the main focus for tonight is to understand your thoughts, your desires, and just the opposite too. What you, how you see Beckett, you're fearful of something that, you know, you, you don't want done or, you know, just really your opinions. So let's go to the next slide. So what's next? As we entered this evening to this beautiful library, we had a map this size on an easel that we asked individuals to put their little sticker uh, just showing where they live in Beckett. It's a fun little activity so we can go home, you know, go to work tomorrow and, and come back and see the smorgasbord of you all pretty much. So um, there's also an option to add your email address to stay updated on what our plan and our committee and our volunteers are working on. So what is open space? Anyone want to raise their hand and give it a go? Nobody knows? Okay, yeah. No one? No takers. It's protected legally. Okay. Great. That's the only taker. All right, so here are some examples of open space. I clicked next on the slide there. It's got a nice playground. And that's pretty easy to, to decide as open space as it's quite open. Here's your town park and some nice picnic benches. I wish today looked like that. <laughs> or tomorrow, <laughs> you know, either way. So let's see here. So those of you on Zoom, this is where it may get a little tiny itsy for you. But the good news is this will be available online after. So um, you can save that as a PDF and zoom in however you'd like. So this map was developed by BRPC. And according to the mass GIS land use data, the vast majority of Beckett is forested. Other major land uses include residential development and water and wetlands. 
Most of the residential development in Beckett is concentrated in three village centers and two large scale subdivisions. Uh, North Beckett, Beckett Center, West Beckett are the town's village centers. Is that still correct? Because I wanted to, yeah. Um, Sherwood Forest and Sherwood Greens are the two subdivisions located around Robin Hood Lake and Longbow Lake. There's very little commercial development here in Beckett. Um, there's also very little agricultural development here in Beckett. The village of North Beckett has historically been the central area of commerce in the town. So you can see all those colors and we've got big versions of maps like that. So don't strain your eyes. Let's go next here. vegetation, a little clearer up here, which is nice. So approximately 83% of Beckett's land is covered by forest. It consists primarily of an oak, maple, hardwoods community, spruce pine, softwoods community, and hemlock beach mixed community. Now, as a new BRPC employee, I am not entirely well-versed yet on the different types of species of trees, um, but the traditional open agricultural lands cover only about 1% of Beckett. These consist of farm fields, corrals, and farm yards, which are scattered across the town. And like I said just a minute ago, the soil's steep slope and shallowness to the bedrock here inhibit a lot of agricultural activities. So let's see next it here. All right, so significant natural resources. Does anyone have a favorite natural resource that they like to visit? Here? Yeah, here. Um, up we down the lake is great. Okay. The gorge right up the road is great. Okay. Um, and pretty much anywhere in October Mountain State Park. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've got to get out and visit. Um, you know, and explore my, my new neighborhood. So significant natural resources, the climate, geology, and soils of the town are typical of the Berkshire Plateau, which is somewhat cooler than much of the rest of the state with the prevailing forest types that are typically found in the more Northern areas of New England. Bogs and other peatlands become well-developed in such cool and acidic conditions. Rich mesic forests are a subset of the typical northern hardwood forests of the area, living in conditions that are moist and exceptionally rich in nutrients. And if you go up here, and this information is from Biomaps, the um, most updated version that we have, I believe is from 2012. So you can see on the bottom there, it's through the Mass GIS system as well. Um, total area, Beckett is about 30 and a half thousand acres population in 2010 was about a little less than 1800 you're closer to 2000 now um, with that 2020 census data coming out um, protected lands about 5000 acres or about 16 and a half percent you have some core habitats and we'll get into these kind of definitions of critical nature landscape core habitats and that kind of stuff when we when we use our hands on activities here in the maps easier to to see than to to read about it. Another map There's a lot of maps tonight so water features this is a very colorful map we've got sub watersheds surface water protection zones cold water fisheries public water supply interim wellhead protection area water supply zone two FEMA hundred year floodplains. Uh, medium yield aquifers and outstanding resource watersheds. So you'll see the largest blob of the pink, the outstanding resource watershed. Does anyone in the crowd know what that is? Al, do you know what that is? Where are you looking? It's Gobble Mountain. Oh, Gobble Mountain. Gobble Mountain. Gobble Mountain. Oh, over there. I had a ruler. It's the Chester watershed. It is the Chester watershed. Yeah. Does anyone know who owns the Chester Watershed? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Why are you sitting in the front row? You should be in the front. <laughs> All right. Usually, no. <laughs> All right. So Beckett's quality of life is directly united with the 
uh, quantity and quality of its water resources. As you can see, there is some significant water resources here in Beckett. The numerous ponds and streams which drain the headwaters of three different watersheds are valued resources of recreation, scenic views, and drinking water. Beckett's abundance of surface water resources has been attracting year-round and part-time residents for over 100 years. Because of the narrow valleys and steep gradients of the brooks, many have been impounded to allow recreational use. All right, so what's a watershed? So this is a nice, nice picture we've got here. A watershed, you can read there, geographic area of land in which all surface and groundwater flows downhill to a common point, such as a river, stream, pond, lake, or wetland. Unlike the more common terms of lakes, ponds, streams, rivers, the uh, Beckett has these, these watersheds um, that is just a little bit a little bit different of a term. And Beckett is riddled with sub watersheds and has a watershed in the eastern side of the town known as Chester Watershed. There we go. Recreational opportunities. This is just a short list of all of the options that we have going on in this nice town. We've got many public lakes and ponds, state-owned lands, we have trails where you can do water sports, hunting and fishing. You've got part of the Appalachian Trail here, the gorgeous Beckett Historic Quarry and Forest, playing fields, playgrounds, and the town beach. Uh, you will see on these maps, we've got, we've got other data there too. And when you take our survey, not if, but when, um, there are many questions on different recreation types, where you like to recreate, what types of activities you do when you visit those locations. So we're just trying to learn a lot about, you know, your outdoor activities, where you like doing them, and why, and more importantly, why you, why you don't like doing them at certain spots, what you feel like you're missing, what we can kind of include in the goals for this new plan. Okay, sidestepping a step. Here we've got deed restrictions, and then I'm going to talk about chapter 61 just briefly. And at the front of the, the building near that map where we ask you to put your little sticker on your house, uh, there's a little half piece of paper that I urge you to take. It's got links about deed restrictions. It's got a link about the CPA funding, I believe. It's got a link to the specific topics that kind of are less common to talk about in a, in a presentation like this as our first one. So as you can see here, the recreational opportunities for the deed restrictions. Um, raise your hand if you're familiar with with what a deed restriction is. I know it's on the screen, but <laughs> okay. So only three of you have read it. <laughs> okay, good. So as you can see, there's a few types of deed restrictions. We've got the agricultural preservation restriction, the conservation mm -hmm. restriction, and a forest legacy. The, for all three of these, the property ownership is retained. And at the very top, you've got the actual definition, which is a legally binding restriction on the use, activity, and or limitation of property rights recorded at the registry of deeds. So all of these options are legally binding, restricting the use, activity, and the property rights. All right. Go ahead. Wow, we have 34 people online. That's great. So. Again, somewhat similar, just in, in the mindset, is the Chapter 61 tax program. It's a tax abatement program to ease the burden of owning large open tracts of land. Um, there are three different types. You've got timber production, which is the Chapter 61, 61A. A stands for agriculture, finally something simple. Chapter 61B, recreation, should have been Chapter 61R, but I don't make the rules. So uh, these are just three different purposes um, with different eligibility and tax assessment. And again, 
that there's a link describing a bit more about this on that half sheet of paper. Maybe I'll walk around and, and hand them out uh, before we leave tonight. So let's go to the next slide. Mike luckily touched on the sono. <laughs> no, I'm not quizzing you. Uh, Mike pointed out the wonderful Community Preservation Act that is uh, happening here. We're currently at one and a half percent. And like he mentioned, the focus areas are the open space and recreation. Sounds awfully familiar. Historic buildings and landscapes and affordable housing. So a minimum of 10% of the revenues collected from that CPA surcharge on the tax bill, 10% goes to open space, 10% to the historic buildings and landscapes, and then 10 to the affordable housing. And then that nice 70% there is as the, sound, the town sees fit. So that's where you come into play. That's where, that's where your voice really, really comes in clearly because you have it, you have it sitting there. And all those projects Mike listed, they're great. I mean, we're, we're standing in one of them right now. There's one right there and there's another one right there that was helped. So that's, it's just a wonderful program um, that, uh, that we should just keep up. And perhaps, you know, if the town is interested, you can increase that percentage. No pushing there, um, but it's an option. Let's go to the existing goals, great. So we've got some cute fish here. Water quality. Who cares about water quality? Oh my gosh, look at the participation. <laughs> oh, okay, great. So water quality, yeah, smart. <laughs> um, the rural landscape consists of forests and farms uh, amidst ponds, streams, and mountains. You're still seeing ponds and streams. Water quality is huge here in Beckett. It's huge. You have, you, it, it's, it's rich with all of these water resources. Um, and with water often comes recreational opportunities. So we want to make sure we have opportunities for all ages, all demographics. Every, anyone who steps foot in Beckett should be able to participate in what they want. Let's go to the works. Yep, here's our nice link. Raise your hand if you took the survey already. Okay, sweet. Oh, they can't see me. Raise your hand if you took the survey. All right. <laughs> I can only see two people. Maybe they raised their hand. Hey, nice. I see a thumbs up and a wave. Very good. So if you haven't taken it, you definitely have the chance tonight to take it. We have Ellen, what, three computers set up um, to take it. It takes about maybe 10 minutes, five minutes, not long at all. Uh, yep, go ahead and take that picture if you want it. And also if you sign up for the email, we um, will make this very much available to you um, through the communication channel. So now is the time that we ask for your suggestions and really just engage. We, you know, I just, I blatantly said, I just moved here. I don't know a ton about Beckett. You know a ton about Beckett. So come up here and teach me so that I can, I can include it in what will eventually help you. So that's where we're going. And here's the nice shout out to the wonderful advisory committee. Stand up advisory committee. We've got Ken Smith. We've got Al Blake. Where does that talk? Where is that there? There's Mike. And we're missing what? One, two, three, four, five. We're missing Cindy Del Papa. I should have just looked up here. So Cindy, we'll see you at Can our I next meeting. Of course. Yeah. She's, um, do you want to see her? I'm thinking about. Do you want to come up here so you're no, on the that's Zoom? All right. Thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to, you know, specify that. Well, no. Will you please come over here just for oh, the Zoom there's camera? There's other yeah. People. I forgot about you. I apologize. I I know other people. <laughs> I just want to make sure that people realize that that CR means that that's in perpetuity and it's a way of protecting. It's not just a benefit, you know, to the individual who owns it. Sometimes we're used to thinking of land protection or even when you talk about water quality, 
So we think about, well, it's great for me and it's great for us and it's great for me. Whereas it's also incredible for the habitats that they serve. Um, and, and one of the things in Beckett, it's brilliant that we have all these lakes, these impoundments, but it also degrades the free flowing river. So it sort of puts it on us, I think, to say, well, let's do a little more to make sure that we get all this benefit from these impoundments. Let's make sure that we don't really degrade the water by you know, not having enough buffer or doing other things that, that don't give our riverways the best shot at staying healthy and serving those other populations of animals and amphibians and insects that we all love. Hi. Um, I'm also a new person who moved to Beckett, you know, just um, about like two years ago. And uh, um, I think that it's a wonderful committee, this one, but I want also to touch base about the CPA. Probably you heard about, you know, CPA here, but you know, last year, the approval for CPA, just letting you know how does it work. You know, so town has money that placed aside and last year, the budget was distributed for three projects. One of them, uh, Michael, if you, you know what, one of them, it was a, a repair of trail. Yes, another one was a huge project for the church. And one more, it was, if I'm not wrong, it was for the art center, you know, what helping to the art center. So the total budget for this was more than $100,000. So you understand that, town has this money that placed a site for the project. So when you think about this, you just need to develop a business plan to come to the town and it should benefit the town life. Okay, so this is not just, okay, so I want to do something, but you know what, it's only for me, my family, and it should benefit the town life and the town future from historical preservation, nature point of view town has money this money sitting aside for this year we didn't get any application and they don't believe that people don't know about this people are looking for money to get into the budget correct so it was attention recently very much to get you know a certain percentage of money but don't forget that we do have some money that coming from the state and from the tax money so for now, we do have money, just come and get the project in, okay? It reflected that the state matches that, yeah. that money that we have. So the second from the state and also from tax money yeah. from the North from Vegas. Yes, there was zero application yeah. for this. Yeah. Okay. Next question. In the 2006 plan, there were a lot of very good ideas put forward. Is there some way to know which ones were acted upon? Some were obviously creating the, the CPA. Yes. Others, it's not yep. clear, like the rail trail with mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Is there is there going to be a summary of achievements? Yes, so there will be. Yep, we're working on that now. The committee is actually working on that. Going, going line by line and seeing, you know, did we do this? Yes, no, yes, cool. How's it going? No, why not? So we're we're on that objective sheet, combing through because there's a chance some of that stuff is going to roll over to to the update. Yes, Al, go ahead. Sarah, is there a listing anywhere of what those restricted properties are? Um, restricted restricted properties. properties. Yeah. You talk about three categories of restricted land. On so the maps here. They are all. Yes. On yep. So maps. we've got um, we've got this open space, this lands of interest, which you guys will see in markers uh, that will come over and and check out. It it depicts the 61, 61 A, and B. Uh, so we've got little sticky notes and end markers down here for for you to come up and literally edit. <laughs> You know, if you, if you see something, oh, what is this? I don't think that's right. Or if you're saying, oh, this should be here, but it's not. That's what we're looking for. 
and people online, these these maps will you can maybe well we'll we'll figure that out. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Yes. Yeah, just have a question. You said that uh, eighty three percent of Beckett is uh, forested. Is that correct? I believe yes. Is that the highest percentage of any town in the Commonwealth? I don't think so. What is the, the I I don't know the highest, um, but I'm. What do you think? At least the boys. There's there's a few hill towns that I think yeah, that have not been. Yeah, hill towns that are a little bit higher. Probably middle field of Peru. Yeah, 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 Peru. Maybe yeah. as well. Yeah. But the important thing to remember too is that even if it it occurs now, mm -hmm. very little of it is protected. Right. That's what. Through that's why. Yeah. or through other means. And so that's one of the things that it's that's a priority. And I agree with you that the, I hope someone said I was looking, manning the golf table, mm -hmm. but <laughs> just the, the idea that the work we're doing is built on incredible numbers of hours and sweat and tears from the other previous yep. open space and recreation committees and taking a lot of their fabulous ideas. And, and it's not us that will do these things. Our job is to bring them forward and then have wonderful community members, you know, say, I'll do that or I'll step up or I'll do that on my own land. And so that's sort of the, the purpose of this. And knowing that the town has the funding mm -hmm. that we've all voted to set aside gives us a little boost. Yep. It hasn't been used in open space purchasing, um, which I would love to see because there are certainly projects and land to be protected in perpetuity for everybody. Mm -hmm. Question, will you guys be making, particularly our town committee, making any kind of presentation at our annual meeting on May 14th to sort of bring a wider group of people into this? I think we had talked about having someone there with information, but I'm not sure like whether it was on the table as people walk in. Mm -hmm. I, I believe so. I think we talked about wanting to have, you know, man in the table. Yeah. And it is going out in everyone's tax bill. Yep. A little flyer. Yep. I think it's a reminder. Don't throw the whole thing out. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, right. Can you talk a little bit about the whole process of this cycle and what you know what the next steps are and what the end result is? Sure. Um, as a person who hasn't fully gone through it yet, uh, Lauren, hop in if I miss miss steps, but just the general idea is again you know in an updated plan it needs to be approved by the state and once we're approved we once you're approved um you'll be available for that that matching the funding that larissa was talking about um for for grant opportunities and for for projects um so that'll be once it's done but for now, we've the committee's been meeting since January, I think, maybe February. No, January. And um, we've been going through. We created the survey. We are combing through different endangered species um, and just kind of looking at the 2006 plan and and comparing it to to what we want this new plan to look like. And that is beginning to include, and we're focusing now on the objectives. Um, so, really, we, you know, like, like Meredith said, we're not, you know, pouring only our blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. It's it's been done. I think Lauren led uh, the 2006 plan, if I'm if I'm right. And so we've we've got a lot of good ideas. We've got most of the meat. We've just got to put it together. There's a uh, person online. He said that the, her brother is uh, a major player in the Florida Greenways, and that in Great Barrington they have a huge Potomac River walk. She was wondering if there's a possibility of developing something of this sort, interconnected recreational open space areas in Beckett. That's a that's a big question. Yeah, I, we'll I'm glad they wrote it down because we're including these questions from the chat in our um, recordings. So tell her 
we don't have i don't know <laughs> i can respond i don't have an answer that. for that flat out right now but um, it's part of the, one of the things that's so brilliant about the river walk in is that oh, oh here this is i'm not i'm not partial to this though <laughs> i'm partial to you being here just not to the dual <laughs> So the river walk in Great Barrington um, was restoring a degraded riverbank. So sometimes when people want to say, well, I would love to have a riverbank walk, but in this instance, you wanna be careful that you're not degrading a riverbank by accessing it. So just keep that in mind that the, the amazing part of the river walk there is that they took a really industrialized um, garbage filled yuck bell horror in for terms of invasives and made it this extraordinary place on the westfield river wild and scenic website we have a series of walks that i did with uh, russ cohen that's an edible walk talking about some of the plants that are on display there so i highly recommend looking at that but also just in thinking about recreation to make sure that we're not degrading anything in our desire to recreate i, I think the Great idea, but would it not have to be on town or state land? You might have properties to do them going through private property. And actually, in a lot of people were up in arms at first, the idea that someone would be walking behind their property, even in Great Barrington. And it was many years of, of landowners seeing that, oh no, this is a wonderful thing. I can walk out my back door. People are enjoying it. It looks so much more beautiful. Now I actually can um, inter interact with the river and my community member. So it doesn't have to be, they just have to have various things in place with people giving those permissions. Love the idea. Yeah. Sneak, sneak. So let's. Um... I have one question if I could. Of course. Uh, Mike would be the man who might know more about this. Certainly, I don't know enough at all. But just the, the, the relationship between the amount of land that's under the control of the town and how that could relate to open space. Because I know that you know, uh, three years ago, about we had an auction. It wasn't a huge success, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> Um, and the property on my street didn't sell. It's still there. It's still, it's, you know, it's nice that I have a big space where nobody is, but we didn't get any money for it. There was no tax revenue from it. It's just there. Um, it would be a lot nicer if the town could convert it into forest land or something. I mean, is there a way to kind of hook up between you know, finding a way to get open space via the method of, well, this this land has fallen into the control of the town, the town is not been able to sell it. Maybe it could be used in another way. Sure, thanks, James. Uh, I think a lot of times the land that has fallen into disrepair or for other reasons gone on undeveloped or unbuilt upon, is is for a reason and the town has to take hold of it uh and a lot of times it's financial reasons and therefore it has to go all the way through the registry of deeds in pittsfield and it's a long laborious process and the the places that you mentioned that we did have on auction had gone through that whole process and if there is still somebody out there an inheritor or a, a, a sibling or something that has any type of rights to it then it it gets locked up in in courts or whatever. But to your point, the the use of town lands, uh, we did um, prevent some of the land get from put, being put on the auction block in the area that's now the Esau's Heel Trail. So we have preserved it as an open space. We're going to put forth a proposition to keep that into perpetuity and and keep that so that it can't be developed. At least the portion that's it's it's largely wetlands and and for good reason it wasn't developed because it couldn't have probably passed concom or whatever but i would like to somehow see that get hooked up to the appalachian trail or and all of these ideas about making a, a railways or a greenways are great ideas and and connecting things in new york state they've done tremendous work 
along the Hudson River and, and made like a hundred mile loop. So I think it would be in conjunction with residents and folks who would allow us to have a right of way, at least for a three foot wide trail in some cases where it would be needed to connect these trails that already exist. But it, it's a great idea and I, I want to see that happen too. So hopefully we can all see that through. Thank you. Thank you for your question. All right, so let's hop up. Um, and we've got maps here. We've got the 2006 action map over here. So if you want to look over here um, and see what, what we were hoping to do in 2006, scurry on over there. We've got fish and wildlife here. We've got again, the open space map here with all the chapter 61 information. And as well, please uh, make sure you put your dot on the map on the easel. If you didn't on your way in, please do it on your way out. And the survey, please participate. We've got the computers live and locked and ready to go. Um, and if you need a hard copy, we can do that as well. Um, just online is easier to tabulate everything. So I thank you very much for coming out. Stick around. Let's get your uh, questions and answers and let's go.